tonight on Nate Newswatch. We take a look at how online classes make cheating even easier. Reword it, uh, mix it up, maybe add some long answers in there. Canada is set to ban single-use plastics by 2021. Because those plastics are going to be manufactured somewhere. They're going to be, and if it's not in here in Alberta, it's going to increase manufacturing in other, other places. And the Alberta government aims to make cuts to Alberta Health Services. This is about the, the, the contracting out of, of certain pieces like labs and, and laundry, um, as, as well as the, uh, the management uh, position review. Um, that, that's really what we're talking about here. Newswatch starts now. Good evening. As many colleges are entering into the midterm season at this time of the school year, staff members are facing a new obstacle, cheating on exams. Many schools and instructors are concerned about the academic misconduct, with most students taking classes virtually at home. Our Karen Park joins us live from our news centre with more on that story. Thanks guys. According to several staff members and students from different colleges I talked to this week, many schools are making some adjustment on the exam this year to prevent the academic dishonesty. As most classes are switched to online after a pandemic, it has become harder for schools to detect whether students are actually following the academic integrity or not at home. Some professors at the University of Alberta are using a software tools to prevent cheating during exam hours. One of my classes uses something called Smart Exam Monitor. So yeah, it essentially it records your screen and also you have your camera on you. So they kind of can see what you're doing on your screen and they try to make sure you don't have posters around or whatever so you can cheat. Other instructors changed the multiple choice exams into writing assessment, which makes it harder to cheat. Usually it's a multiple choice, but because of COVID right now, everything is more, uh, they moved it to an online format and I have to write a lot of stuff. So no multiple choice and it's all about writing essays. Some of them were just making it to assignment and then, uh, and then we review it uh, or we just take an exam that we presently have and we'll reword it, uh, mix it up, maybe add some long answers in there. On the optimistic side, one staff member at Nate observed that not all students are academically misconducting after school switch to online. Have we seen students um, uh, conduct themselves um, dishonestly academically since we switched to online? Um, yes, we have, um, but so far we haven't seen a vast increase. As of now, there is no technology that catches every single cheating happening at students' home. In the end, it is only up to students honestly and maturity level. Karen, so you're saying that there is no way to detect perfectly what students are doing during the exam? That is right, Destiny. Although the instructors are keeping their eyes on students as much as they can, it is true that they can't tell what is going on in students' room. Even if they are sharing the screens and showing themselves on a camera, the footage that instructors see is very limited. So Karen, aside from students receiving higher marks dishonestly, what are some other side effects for cheating on exams? Well, if students misrepresent their understanding, it is most likely that they won't receive an accurate feedback that will benefit in the, in the long term. Cheating will eventually result in disadvantage themselves and they won't make any further progressions in their field of study. Thanks, Karen. That's our Karen Park reporting live from our news center. You're watching Nate News Watch, the next generation of news. The Alberta government is making major cuts to Alberta Health Services. The UCP announced that its plans to cut 11,000 jobs, which is intended to save Alberta up to $600 million a year. Any involuntary reductions will be minimal. This is about the, the, the contracting out of, of certain pieces like labs and, and laundry um, as, as well as the, uh, the management uh, position review. Um, that, that's really what we're talking about here. The budget cuts are said not to affect any part of the COVID-19 response and cause no major delays in wait times. The federal government has revealed its plan to phase out some single-use plastics by the end of 2021. The announcement comes just 24 hours after Alberta signaled their plans to strengthen efforts in recycling plastic. Our Tate Laycraft reports from Calgary. Yeah, thanks guys. 
So stir sticks, straws, and plastic bags are among items included in the ban, but here in Alberta, the UCP government is worried that the ban will affect markets for plastic products made by petrochemical engineering. Plastics are going to be manufactured somewhere. They're going to be, and if it's not in here in Alberta, it's going to increase manufacturing in other, other places. We want it in Alberta because we need it to diversify the economy and to create jobs. Premier Kenny addressed the ban this week, placing emphasis on the idea that plastic waste could be further reduced through new recycling initiatives. In prioritizing the economy, supporters say it makes sense, but not everyone is convinced of its environmental efficiency. Some of the things that they're looking at banning, like plastic straws, stir sticks, um, the plastic cutlery, those are really hard to recycle. The proposed ban will also have impact on Alberta restaurants. Throughout the pandemic, demand for takeout has skyrocketed, and while businesses that use cardboard packaging might see smaller effects, it will be more difficult for those that depend on plastics. You know, for a lot of takeout businesses that rely on styrofoam and, and plastic with the dishes, I could see where, you know, it could be quite a significant impact on, on them. Ottawa says that they'll continue to work with grocers, industry leaders, and provincial governments as the situation develops. Tate Laycraft, Nate News Watch, Calgary. Colder temperatures are approaching, and over 600 people a night in our city are sleeping outside without shelter. The city of Edmonton is taking part of the Edmonton Convention Center and turning it into a place for the homeless to sleep. Our short-term goal is to ensure the safe and dignified transition of individuals out of the cold and into spaces that provide meaningful temporary care and support. The convention center will have room for 300 overnight and 400 during the day. The center will be open 24 hours a day. The mortgage deferral program has come to a halt, but with many struggling to find financial stability, this could be a trying time for homeowners. Fortunate people that are back to work and are making the money, um, they can move to like a new area, say that they couldn't move before because of other people's misfortunes and having to sell at such a low price just to get out of their loan. The mortgage deferral program began in March, giving homeowners up to six months of postponed payments while they were unemployed or had experienced a substantial reduction in income due to COVID-19. Over 20% of Edmonton households deferred mortgage payments at some point this summer, the highest number of all major Canadian cities. Calgary had the second highest number coming in at 18. Somebody who's on a mortgage deferral right now uh would probably have an opportunity somewhere to get a little extra help to make it so that uh, when things get better, uh, they can get back on their feet with regards to owning their own property. Although homeowners are expected to resume paying their mortgages with regularity after the six-month period is up, other possibilities remain. Many financial institutions are providing a skip a payment option or extended deferrals depending on the situation. This is expected to provide mortgagees with ample time to pay their debt. The City of Edmonton unveiled its new bus stop signage on Tuesday. Mayor Don Iveson put the finishing touches on the new sign in front of City Hall Tuesday afternoon. This is the first of 7,000 signs that will be replaced by April 25th, when the restructuring of the bus network will be implemented. We're really excited about the changes that are happening in the city and this really represents the first stage in that change. The new busing network is expected to provide more frequent service and direct routes and the new signs will be providing more detailed important information for riders. This will be the city's first revamping of the bus network in over 20 years. As COVID restrictions put a halt to Nate's in-person open house this year, students are still able to get a full experience virtually this weekend. Chelsea McKay has more on this story. Every October, Nate's open house brings in thousands of prospective students from all over the world, giving them the chance to explore the campus. Although no one is allowed on campus this year, Nate is offering the two-day event virtually. Um, because one of the uh, exciting things about going virtual 
is that accessibility piece and the opportunity for folks um, to not have to physically come to Edmonton to experience all that open house and that Nate has to offer them. The event will have a virtual lobby where you can access over 20 program booths and have the chance to ask staff and student services about the exhibit via live chat or video. They offer help with student funding along with a swag bag that is filled with resource links to help you. Personally, I think it's really convenient because I don't live in Alberta, so it gives me an opportunity to see the campus. Open House is a one-of-a-kind experience for anyone. It allows students to get a hands-on visual of what they would be going into. For some, Open House is what helps them make their final decision. It, it opens your eyes not only to what the programs specifically are, if you're looking to one in particular, um, but it also kind of shows you what else Nate offers. Like, I had no idea there was such thing as radio school before I went to the Open House. The open house takes place starting today until Saturday at 3 p.m. You can head on over to nate.ca to pre-register for the event and you still have up to 30 days to explore the booths afterwards. This is Chelsea McKay, Nate News Watch. Coming up after the break, we take a look at how COVID-19 is affecting the dating scene. Um, daters are struggling with finding someone to be in a relationship with while also following COVID-19 safety measures. They kind of like all the easy and the fun parts, um, like going on dates, being around each other, sex as well, um, is just that much, that much sweeter. I'm Mia Hildebrandt and this week we take a look at how rowing has thrived despite COVID-19, who the Oilers have signed and re-signed in free agency this year, and more coming up in sports. Carly McKinnock for Nate Newswatch Weather. I'll be the bearer of bad news this week as most of Alberta, Edmonton included, will see snow this weekend. I've got that and more coming up after the break. Starting to get the chills, our destiny. Uh, kind of afraid I'm going to get a case of the sniffles this weekend. Yeah, you might want to break out your winter jacket, some gloves and some boots so you don't get a case of the sniffles. Well, Carly McInuck has more on the weather. Thanks guys, it's definitely getting a lot colder out there. Edmonton is actually seeing weather we don't typically see until more so November rather than mid-October. But we'll get back to Edmonton in just a second. Let's move on to Alberta weather. In Calgary, we have a high of minus three and a low of minus five. There's also a pretty good chance of some light snow this weekend, so make sure you're bundling up. Moving on to Jasper, we're gonna see a high of zero and a low of minus nine. So if you're going hiking, make sure you're bundling up. In Fort McMurray, we see a low of minus seven and a high of minus two. It's definitely gonna warm up as the day goes on and there's not really any chance for snow or rain. Moving on to our Edmonton forecast, we're gonna see a mix of sun and clouds with a high of minus one and a low of minus eight. There's a little bit chance of flurries this weekend, so make sure you're taking in your plants, any of the ones that are left outside. Moving on to our averages. Usually we see about a plus 10 average for the high and a zero for the low. So we're definitely a lot colder this year than normal. For our records, way back in 1903, we saw a high of plus 23. Really wish we were seeing that weather this year. And our record low was a minus 12. Make sure you're bundling up this weekend. That's all I've got for weather. Back to you in the studio. Newswatch weather is brought to you by NR92, the station for the students. Thanks, Carly. The online world is in our lives more than ever since the start of COVID-19. But how has this affected the dating community? A major spike in the use of dating apps beginning in March and now moving into October, they continue to be on the rise. Here's Jaden Mikituk with more. Mr. Goddamn Lock. Dating online has never been harder. Before the beginning of the COVID-19 stay-at-home order, dating appeared easier to the casual online dater. But since the order has been lifted, it seems things haven't gotten back on track. Realistically, like as far as it goes, just because like it's so hard, especially like when cases are so high, like I'm just so nervous to like actually like meet people. Although some are finding it harder getting into relationships, the pandemic has put an even bigger strain on those already participating in online relationships. When you get to know somebody on such an emotional level, on such a deep and, and personal level, um, I think having kind of like all the easy and the fun parts um, 
like going on dates, being around each other, sex as well, um, is just that much, that much sweeter. Heading into our new normal of wearing masks and physically distancing, there are still other precautions people in the dating community need to keep in mind. If you have been out with um, a few partners in the past and haven't had a, um, a sexual health test, then it would be in your best interest and, and in the, your new partner's best interest to get tested. The beginning of this year has been a wild ride for dating, relationships, and dealing with your own sexual health. With cases so high, dating expectations are low. Students in the online dating community should take notice to the climbing numbers and STIs in the Edmonton area while going back into the in-person dating we used to know. This is Jaden Mikatuck, Nate News Watch. With most sports taking a back seat this year, this week we take a look at one in particular that has thrived. The Oilers have also wrapped up their free agent signings. We go to Mia Hildebrandt all the way in Winnipeg for more on who the Oilers picked up. That's right guys, I'm far away from the sights and smells of the Nate Locker Room as I'm here in front of the Blue Bomber Stadium. Sports like football and basketball have had to take a bit of a back seat this season due to COVID-19, but rowing has taken it as an opportunity to grow. With COVID-19 bringing most sports to a halt this year, Rowing has been in a unique position that has allowed their sport to thrive. With Rowing Canada giving the okay to row in single and double boats, it's been a way for longtime soccer player Maddie Leslie Toogood to keep her competitive edge. All my regular activities got shut down, so I was looking for a new and fun way to stay physically active. Turn to rowing was, was from Rowing Canada specific, obviously with the approval of the province as well. So we were one of the first sports that was able to provide um, activity. With new Learn to Row programs put in place, rowing is hopeful they can continue to build their sport in the future. Despite the U of A sitting on the sidelines in U Sports this season, they still managed to pull some of the top recruits. Justine Colodi is one of the top setters of the 2021 class and has committed to the U of A women's volleyball team. The Pandas have built a prestigious program over the years, and thankfully, most of the recruiting was done before the decision to pull out of the league was made, but it's added some roster and eligibility complications. So it obviously, it didn't really change too much. Like I knew I still wanted to go there, but now um, some of their players, they have added eligibility. So there's some girls that'll be playing for them in for two years instead of just one. Despite some playing an extra year at the Seville Center, Justine is excited to get to work with the Pandas for the 2021 season. A Canadian Liberian boxer has her sights set on making history at the Olympics, whenever they may happen. After immigrating to Canada in 2006, Grace Fen Boulay picked up boxing and it quickly became more than a hobby. After getting a great result at the Provincial and Canadian Olympic Trials, she got an invitation to compete internationally in France for a chance to punch her ticket to Tokyo. Right now we're just, you know, trying and trying and it's, and I have to stay, um, stay ready because anything can happen at any time. Um, but this is an incredible moment, not just for me, but for my country. Um, this is, this will really put us on the map. Pending on the COVID-19 situation next year, Grace is looking to become the first female boxer for Liberia in history. With free agent frenzy coming to a close, the Oilers have a bit of a new look this season. The Oilers have signed center free agent Kyle Turris and defenseman Tyson Berry in this year's free agency. Last season with the Nashville Predators, Turris had 31 points, 9 goals and 22 assists, while Barry had 39 with the Leafs, scoring 5 goals and 34 assists. The Oilers have also re-signed goaltender Mike Smith on a one-year deal. I think the Oilers are in an encouraging spot for next season. And the reason why I say that is when you look at their salary cap situation uh, after next year, they have about $16 million coming off the books. Uh, so there's a lot of conversations about the Oilers being in potential play for a guy like Taylor Hall. While the Oilers will be looking a little bit different next season, we're optimistic it's a change for the better. Well, I'm sure looking forward to some Olympic action soon. That's been your look at Nate Sports this week. I'm Mia Hildebrandt in Winnipeg. Back to you guys in the studio. 
Thanks, Mia. That's Mia Hildebrandt reporting from Winnipeg. Coming up after the break, we look into a food shortage at food banks. After the Thanksgiving weekend, food banks in Edmonton are now seeing a shortage in supplies. Essentially, yeah. what it means is we want to feed the people. Um, one day, we want to be able to close our doors and say that poverty isn't a thing in Edmonton, an area that we're not in need of something like a food bank. That's just not the case. The snow is coming, but that won't stop you from joining Festival Place in their new cafe series or rip it around the track at West Emmett Mall's new biggest attraction. All that and more in entertainment. The Edmonton Food Bank was back to work on Tuesday, and after a Thanksgiving long weekend, their bank is still looking for more deposits. Since March, the Food Bank has served upwards of 20,000 people. But after yet another successful Thanksgiving, their shelves could definitely use your donation. One day we want to be able to close our doors and say that poverty isn't a thing in Edmonton, an area that we're not in need of something like a food bank. That's just not the case right now. It wasn't a typical Thanksgiving this year at the food bank. With many still struggling to put food on the table during the outbreak, they turned to the volunteers and donors of the charity. And although they were glad to help, they're asking for a little bit back. It's very uh, gratifying to know that you're being able to provide such a basic assistance to people and one that um, everybody, you know, everybody needs food. So it's always great to be able to provide that. With CERB payments soon coming to an end, the bank foresees their usership increase even more. Non-perishable goods can be dropped off at any major grocery store in the city or a donation can be made online that will go towards replenishing and feeding their cause. One former Nate grad is making movies and winning awards. His success in the film industry is turning a lot of heads here in Edmonton. We joined David Udo to bring us up to speed on his story. You need to say their first name and remember some of the patients don't respond to their names. Brandon Rhines was a former Nate graduate who achieved more success than he ever imagined. During his time out of Nate from 2000, he has written and created multiple movies and short films. His recently written movie, John 316, was just nominated for five awards from the Alberta Media Production Industries Association. Um, yeah, honestly, winning awards is it's great. It's, it's a surprise. I mean, it's something, I honestly, I don't think about when I'm writing. It's not like the reason I write. And I never really imagined that I would honestly win an award. The 40-year-old, originally from Wetaskiwin, Alberta, is spoken highly of by his co-workers and even former teachers. And once he, he told me what he had been doing, I'm like, oh my God, have you ever flourished? He found a passion in what he was doing and it just exploded. Writing has always been a part of Brandon's life, even in his earliest stages. I've always been writing ever since I was basically able to write. I think it was kindergarten or something. It's just something that was never a decision. It just kind of was always there. I just always had an interest in stories and telling stories. Brandon ended up winning Best Candidate Feature Award. Although with the many awards he's winning and being nominated for, he's nowhere satisfied with where he is at. He has made enough scripts for many years down the line. He aims to provide more movies for his viewers to watch. I'm David Udo, Nate Newswatch Calgary. Watch out, speeders. Looks like we have a new track in town. I'm excited to take my racing talents to the new spot. Our Tyler Smith has more on that coming up. Thanks, guys. Adam, I'm sure excited to see those talents. Galaxy Land, World Water Park, Marine Life, and now. A one-of-a-kind, three-level go-kart track that will get your adrenaline and competitive side revving up at West Edmonton Mall. Tight corners and speed will have you feeling like you were in a racing movie alongside your friends and family on the track. Electric state-of-the-art racing carts are ready for families or groups of any size to experience the thrill of drive. With its New York themed street art all around the track and building, the sights and sounds of the race will keep you at the edge of your seat as you chase that lap record. 
We have actually been sold out every other day. So um, anything from highly encouraging people to purchase their tickets online in 24 hours in advance um, and kind of keeping up with the demand there is kind of has been our challenge if you consider that a challenge. General admission is $27, which grants you seven minutes of straight drifting and racing. Races are booked on a first come, first serve basis and can be purchased 24 hours in advance online through the West Edmonton Mall website. Halloween is around the corner and with Dr. Dina Hinshaw giving the go ahead for trick or treaters, it's time for costume lovers to find their next masterpiece. A Halloween season during a pandemic can be challenging, but for Lorna and Edmonton's Halloween alleys, business is still running smoothly thanks to people being cooped up in their houses and wanting some Halloween decor to spook their house up. You know, we're very movie driven, license driven, and without all these new movies being uh, released, I think um, people are kind of going back to sort of classic Halloween, right? Back to witches, ghosts, and clowns for costumes this year, but an opportunity to incorporate a creative face mask has the mask flying off the shelves at all three Halloween Alley stores in the Edmonton area. Walking down White Ave or the streets of the University of Alberta at night can be eerie, but knowing what truly lies behind the doors of the different buildings you walk past might make for a spine-chilling feeling out here tonight and for supporting small business and for supporting the arts industry. Veteran storytellers share true ghost reportings, murder histories and hauntings that have flooded particular buildings and shops for decades. Whether it's the U of A and Garneau Theatre History Walk or the haunted hike through Old Strathcona, both tours are full of ghostly stories and unexplained events. But to me it's about bringing the story to life. So even though we're talking about ghost stories, I love history. So we're also bringing the history of the area to light as well. So it's almost like one stop shopping. You can experience these brought to life stories and happenings every night at either 7 p.m. or 9 p.m. With limited tour space and social distancing regulations, make sure to secure your spot at EdmontonGhostTours.com. The cold is here and putting an end to outdoor concerts, but Festival Place in Shura Park is continuing their cafe series tradition thanks to Qualico Communities to keep the in-person forces alive. In the meantime, we've got some really good programming that maybe slips through the cracks or otherwise wouldn't uh, get the forefront. And um, Dave Aid's a good friend of mine. Uh, Rooster Davis puts on a killer show. The first show of its kind for Rooster Davis as Festival Place is adhering to Alberta Health Services protocols which include a maximum of 150 people inside the building and required masks throughout the show. Before COVID started, I couldn't do what I'm about to do this Saturday. So that's, that's the area of growth for sure. I'm, I'm definitely a better Hammond organ player. The intimate cafe setting will give Rooster and his rhythmic instrumental blues style the perfect location to get the audience grooving and moving. For only $25, you can join Festival Place this Saturday in celebrating Rooster and his talents. Only a few tickets remain. For me, I really love my concerts. The atmosphere for one and the live music always makes for a good time. I may have to check out the cafe series. I'm Tyler Smith and this has been Newswatch Entertainment. Thanks, Tyler. That cafe series sounds pretty awesome. I might have to go check it out. Getting pretty chilly out. I hope uh, I can warm myself up with some coffee and some good music. Yeah. Well, that's all we have this week on Newswatch. I'm Destiny Mayer. And I'm Adam Srink. Have a wonderful weekend.